Ready? Here we go again. Take two. I'm going to do this without any film editing. So, uh, I said film. Um, this is an A9P computer. This harness is out of a 1992 Mustang. This video applies to the 92 and the 93 harnesses, which I prefer for a fuel injection conversion on an older Ford because it has a built-in fuel pump relay and uh, versus the earlier models that had the fuel pump relay underneath the seat and you have to wire in a separate circuit. This one has a built-in fuel pump relay. It's easier ultimately to convert. Uh, much of this will pertain also to the earlier harnesses, but some will be different. So all of the wiring might not be precise. So I only guarantee this for the 92 to 93 cars. We're gonna start at this end. I'm gonna try to explain everything very clearly. Obviously, this connects your computer. All right, you might have had a cover on it. I just popped it off. We're gonna go first to the green plug where you're gonna wind up snipping a couple of wires because this plug originally went into, I believe, a dash harness uh, for, for the Fox body. The first one you're gonna cut is right here. Hopefully you can see that. It looks like a what, green or gray wire with yellow. What is it? Green and yellow or green and yellow. Okay, uh, I'm slightly colorblind. Anyway, you're gonna cut this wire and this wire gets key on uh, and crank power, okay? Uh, and uh, so you're gonna get a steady 12 volts uh, for key on and crank. I believe I've got it here for the fuel pump relay. Uh, and I thought I mentioned one down here was for that also, but regardless, I'm 100% certain key on crank 12 volts straight to that. All right, uh, the next wire that you're gonna cut out of here, I believe it went into there, it's the double green yellow wire. That actually goes straight to your fuel pump uh, and that's gonna supply power to your fuel pump. Uh, you can connect that into one wire, just make sure you run at least a 10 gauge wire. Uh, if you've got a long run, uh, maybe even a little thicker than that uh, if you're going all the way to the trunk. Um, so that's gonna power your fuel pump. The next wire looks like this and it's got a little open uh, wire. That's just a ground. You connect that to any chassis ground underneath the dash. All right, so then we're gonna move on further to this funky looking wire right here, which I actually just pulled and cut out. And you can see the coloring here. Okay, this is a simple ground and it's gonna come, if you're holding your wire right here, uh, it's gonna come in the middle row of pins. You probably won't be able to see it, but it's in the middle row of pins directly adjacent to this. So the one in the middle directly to the left as you're holding it this way with the two deals up. This originally went to the neutral safety switch on top of your uh, T5, probably your AOD too. Uh, and you have to ground this wire out. If you don't ground this wire out to a chassis ground, or, uh, it won't, um, you won't be able to pull codes and you'll never figure out why you can't pull codes. Okay, this is the computer, the EEC relay right okay so then you're gonna go here see if you can zoom in on these colors it's a gray with a black stripe wire and uh, they said it's pink with an orange striped wire and these are coming straight it's hard to see but these are coming straight from pin three and pin six so three and six and these are your vehicle speed sensor wires it's not uh, mandatory that you connect them, but if you don't connect these to a vehicle speed sensor going to your transmission, then you could stall on deceleration. And that always gets a little bit annoying. So we're gonna go ahead and move down here to the next wire harness. This is a long one. Wait. All right, coming off of the long one, You've got two relays. One of them is your air conditioning relay. If some of you are real fancy, you might be running air conditioning in your old vintage Ford. I have windows that roll down. Uh, the next one is the fuel pump relay. All right, and this is the nice part about this harness is it's built into this harness. On the earlier harnesses, you don't have this. You have a separate harness that goes under the seat. I guess it's not really a big deal, but this is a convenience factor. We're gonna move further on down this harness. And I've actually extended this one quite a bit. And this is simply your mass air meter plug. 
right? Some of these are gonna be self-explanatory. They only plug into one thing. Okay, moving down this further, this is our oxygen sensor harness, the O2 sensor harness, all right? You got a shorter one and a longer one, all right? And they go to a specific side. The longer, the longer side goes to your driver's, uh, driver's side oxygen sensor. And the shorter one goes to the passenger side. All right, hopefully I'm not moving too fast. We're gonna keep moving our way down here. What is this? Oh, this originally went to uh, the battery ground for the computer. So uh, we're just gonna ground these out. You see my little Mickey Mouse connections here. <laughs> I did this a long time ago. All right. Uh, moving along further, what do we have next? All right, we have your EEC test junction box. You probably won't even have this anymore. It's the first time I've ever seen one of these things. Usually you get thrown in the trash. But this is your self-test port to pull codes for your computer. All right, we're going to move further along. And we have this. It's all cut off, but you know which one I'm dealing with because it's the one right after the self-test port harness. This originally had a gray connector on it that snapped into the coil on the Fox body. All right, this was separate, but this had the gray connector on it. And these two, very simply, they just go to your coil, your negative and your positive. Uh, and of course, I don't remember which is which. <laughs> if I had a guess, this is positive and this would be negative, but you can look that up pretty much anywhere, or trial by error, it's gonna work or not, right? Uh, this, this is gonna power uh, much of your harness. Uh, and I believe it also powers the fuel pump relay. This is why I said I was confused about this one, but they both go to power. This one gets your constant power. Oh, that's why. The one over here was the key on and crank signal for the EEC relay, I'm sorry, the fuel pump relay. And this one here is your constant power signal for the fuel pump relay. That simply goes to your starter relay, uh, your plus, straight to your battery, whatever. Constant power on this one. All right, we're going to go a little bit further. This is your MAP or your BAP sensor. It's a MAP sensor if you're running speed density and you hook it to vacuum. This is a mass air harness, so we call it a BAP sensor. Same thing. Uh, you're gonna leave that open to atmosphere on a mass air car. Do not connect that to vacuum on a mass air car, right? All right, we're gonna move further. Okay, timing spout. Well, you get the idea. I don't feel like messing with that. That just pulls straight out when you time your car, pull it out, set your timing, pop it back in. I've extended this for my convenience. This simply goes to your distributor. This is your TFI plug. All right, almost done, salt and pepper shakers. You hear a lot of grief about these online. It's simply a connection point. This is where a lot of people suffer idle issues and connection issues because uh, there's so many pins in here. Uh, technically speaking, if you're hardcore and cleaning up this harness, you can just delete this whole thing. Snip it here, snip it here, and just straight butt connect all those wires or solder them uh, and get rid of those. But it's just a connection point. Um, if you have uh, issues, it's common that people pull them apart and uh, separate or try to expand the pins so they plug in a little bit better, get better connectivity, whatever. Uh, I've never had to do that yet. Uh, I've been fortunate. Um, anyway, after the salt and pepper shakers, uh, attached to the uh, fuel injection harness uh, for the fuel injector, you're going to see this. This is extremely important. If you don't connect this to a ground, you're going to have massive issues. And uh, this always just gets connected to the bell housing uh, bolt right in the back of the motor. Usually the bell housing bolt, uh, the first one up top on the driver's uh, passenger side. Uh, that gets connected to. We have a few more sensors. This one, uh, I don't remember. This is either EGR. I think this might be EGR or uh, uh, it could be your, your temp sensor for your computer. It's only going to go into one spot by the time you get there. It's self-explanatory. This is your fuel injection harness, right? And uh, this is pretty self-explanatory how this works also. Uh, now, I, now I seem to remember. Uh, this one here, I believe, was the EEC plug. Again, they're only going to fit on one side. So if you get it swapped and uh, it doesn't plug into the appropriate sensor, then you've got your uh, sensors on the wrong side. So fuel injectors right there. That's it. This is really a pretty... 
a simple conversion. It's not complicated at all. You connect all those to where I tell you to connect them, and that thing will fire right up. Thank you.